interesting is the Fatimid Khilafah was a rival Khilafah to the main Khalif, which was in Baghdad. And they were helping the Crusaders to provide supply lines so that they stocked up within the occupation of Palestine at the time. So Salahuddin al Ayyubi, rahimullah, he knew that the problem was a political problem. It's not a sectarian one. It was a case of unifying the Muslims. It was a case of uh, preventing the, the, the Crusaders from having political and, uh, and strategic support so that they could perpetuate the occupation within Jerusalem. And that's why he fought against them. Uh, and he, he established that. But what's interesting is that the Khalifas in the past, like for example, during the time of Imam Ghazali, they never used to adopt upon the specifics of Islam. So they dropped it upon the general aqidah of Islam. But they didn't adopt upon the specifics. And Imam Ghazali, he, he wrote a book called al Faisal Tafrika, where he discussed what are the key criteria of a Muslim and what are those things which are branches where people have differed over or even if the differences in the Aqidah in the branches are invalid, they still don't make the person a non-Muslim. Then he talked about the Shia and what their views were and where it fell. He, they talked about the, the, the Hashashins and the Ismailis and other people as well. So he, he demarcated that. And he demarcated that because it allowed the Khalifa then to recognize who are Muslims, who are not Muslims, how to apply Islam in its comprehensive sense, but also to explain that he shouldn't be adopting upon the specific branches of Islam. And historically, that's always been the case. And that's why you've had different madhahibs, different schools of thought, even different schools of Islamic, uh, you know, Aqidah and theology existing, even though the Khalifa himself would not adopt upon a specific one. There were times when the Khalifa did do that and there were problems. Like, for example, at the time of Ahmed bin Hanbal, when the Khalifa adopted the, the Mu'tazila beliefs on the Qur'an being created and that caused issues but generally they stayed away from that the other point about this issue of does the Khalifa is he Shia or is he Sunni look historically the Shia believe and it's in there like the Aqidah that only Imam Mahdi can rule so they've always had this political passivity yeah not getting involved mm -hmm. and that's because they believe it's haram for them to get into positions of power and that's why the Sunnis, as we'd say, they were able to establish. The real question is, is that for the Shia, is what type of society do they want to live, live under? Do they want to live under an Islamic society, which means the values of Islam, which they agree with and we agree with, are established, whether that is a you know, uh, you know, Sunni or whatever, but that person applies the laws of Islam in its general sense without trying to you know, uh, uh, you know, enforce a particular madhahib upon the people. And I think generally what you'll find is that general Shia and as well as Sunnis will say, yes, this is the type of society we want, a society that respects the Islamic values, the core of the Islamic aqidah of Islam, that ensures that people's you know, food, clothing and shelter are being met, that their security is being established. That's what they want and that's what we need to establish. When we start bringing in the discourse of Shia can't be rulers, then you're going to create backs up because their fear is going to be, well, if these people who aren't going to establish the Islamic State come, they're going to oppress us and they're going to cause this problem, they're going to cause that problem, and you create a backlash. And inst instead, you actually politicize them to get involved in the political process, yeah? where it actually contra contradicts in, in origin their particular beliefs.